Feather, we've never even discussed buying a house. Why is it so important all of a sudden? It is not all of a sudden, Jeff. You're going to be a father. Now, don't you want your family to start out right in a home of our own, like, like most doctors have? Heather, I am not most doctors. I just got my license a few months ago. You're talking about guys who have been around for a long, long time. They have their own practices. But I am glad you uh, reminded me about Jameson. Why? Because uh, I want to call Rick and remind him about the, the loan that he promised me. I want to have the money in hand next time Jameson calls. I think he meant it when he said this would be the last chance I'd have of meeting him. Jeff, you have not heard one word I said, have you? Yes, I have, Heather. And I know how much all this Jameson business upsets you. But I have got to meet with the guy, assuming he calls back, that is. But why? Heather, have you totally forgotten that Jameson said he actually knows where Stephen Lars is? Well, exactly when does your plan leave, Dory? Oh, uh, listen, have a wonderful, wonderful time in London. And, and please, uh, give Katie Mark my love, will you? Mine, too. Uh, Dan, too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Uh, Let me talk to Dora for a minute, will you? I want to give her another message. Uh, right. Uh, Dora, hold on a second, Dan. We'd like to talk to you. Uh, have a wonderful time. Don't think about the hospital. And here he is. Hello, Dory. Jesse, aren't these choir songs delicious? I think it was just so sweet of Dad to bring them for us. Yes. Listen, when you see Katie, will you tell her the next time I see her, I may have a very big surprise for her? Well, sure, it sounds mysterious. That's the way I want it. No, no, no. Good news. Wonderful news. At uh, least it will be if I get the answer I'm expecting. Jesse, what's no. wrong? And nothing. No, I'm not sure when it'll be, because you see, I, uh, I haven't asked the question yet. Good. I hope Katie's as confused as you are. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Dory. Have a nice flight. <laughs> Somebody's feeling pretty good today. That's not the half of it, Bobby. I feel like a kid with a golden future ahead of him. If I could do a fucking wing, I would. As a matter of fact, I think I'll try. <laughs> Dan, why don't you sit down before you hurt yourself? <laughs> Dan, what's your secret surprise for Mrs. Dante? Uh, Bobby, eat your breakfast. We'll be late for the hospital. This is not the most restful morning I can remember. Would you mind getting that for me, Bobby, please? Sure, Jesse. Hello? Hey, how you doing there, Bobby? It's Carl Jameson. I checked the uh, mail this morning, and there was nothing in it from you. Of course not. I haven't had time. Bobby, in case of your own peace of mind, you better make time. It's not that easy. Well, I've been doing some thinking. And I figured that, uh, you know, it's going to be hard for you to come up with the whole $500 all at once. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you pay it off in installments. You know, like $100 a time. But you got to send that first installment immediately today, air mail special delivery, okay? I'll try. No, no, no. That's not going to be good enough. Try. See, I've got a friend in Jacksonville, you know, and he's got some photographs that he took when you were down there hanging out with your cousin Lorraine. Remember that? Well, this friend of mine, he's sending the photographs up here, and if they have to arrive in the mail before your check does, well, then I'm just going to have to take those photographs, send them along with a little letter to Mrs. Hardy at General Hospital. And Mrs. Hardy is the head of student nursing. Is that right? How did you find that out? Well, it's not exactly uh, classified information. I just called the hospital one day and they told me. And I, another thing is, see, all these calls, the long distance calls, cost me a lot of money. It's getting very expensive. So if you don't start coming across, then I'm afraid I'm just going to have to up the price a lot. How do I know if I send you what you're asking for, that'll be the end of it? You have my word of honor. You what? You know, that's almost funny. Well, listen, listen, I don't expect miracles. 
I have a pretty good idea of what your financial situation is, and I don't think the price I'm asking is unfair to keep your secret just that, secret. I know that you certainly changed more than just your name since you moved up from Jacksonville. Like I say, Bobby, these calls are getting very, very expensive. So you get that money in the mail, special delivery, today. Um... Yeah, well, I, I really appreciate you calling, and I'll try, but I can't make any promises. Bye. Anything wrong? Oh, no, Jesse, that was just somebody that I've been promising to uh, write to for a long time, and I just haven't had the time. Oh, good grief, I would have thought you'd got up with all your friends when you were... Locking yourself in your room and writing letters a couple weeks ago. Well, not this one. I guess this is just something I'm going to have to take care of. Anybody want anything from the kitchen? No, not to me, thank you. Well, Rick, is there anything I can do? Well, I'm, I'm sure everything will work out. Oh, and Rick, uh, thanks for the loan. Yeah, give Laura and Leslie my love and tell Laura not to worry too much, right? Okay, bye. What was that all about? Well, it seems that uh, Laura and Scotty went up to the lake for dinner. Laura, or, uh, Scotty had car trouble and couldn't get Laura back in time for her curfew. And uh, for some reason, Laura's family court investigator drove up there and walked in on the home. Well, I don't understand. How did you find out about it? Who knows? Rick really couldn't go into detail because I think Laura was right there. But I gathered that she's, uh, she's pretty terrified that Judge Stallman's gonna find out about it and send her to a reform school or something. Rick sounded a little nervous about it himself, but I think he was doing his best to hide it. Boy. I don't know what would happen to Rick and Leslie if the judge decided to reverse his decision and send Laura away. Oh, poor Laura. Yeah. It never seems to end for her, does it? I gather Rick is going to give you the money you asked for. Yeah, yeah, he's really great about the loan. He said he'd get it out of his savings account today and give it to me. I'll just keep it in the uh, hospital safe until Jameson calls again. Jeff, we were just talking about not being able to afford things like a house. Now, how are you ever going to pay Rick back out of your salary? Honey, he's my brother. He's not some loan association. I'll pay it back when I can, a little at a time. He knows that. Heather, there is a chance that we can find our son, a son that we gave up for dead of over a year ago. Don't you think that's the most important thing in the world right now? I don't believe Jameson for one minute, and I don't see how you can. I'm sure he doesn't have any information at all about Stephen Lawrence. You know what kind of person he is, the kind that finds out about other people's tragedy and then tries to, to get money from them. Okay, all right. All right. Maybe it's just a feeling I have. Maybe it's wishful thinking, I don't know. But I think the guy really knows something. He was right about that death certificate being a forgery, wasn't he? Well, now that Mitch Williams is involved, maybe he won't call back at all. No, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's gonna call me back. And this time, I'm gonna make sure I have the cash and make sure nothing scares him off this time. Heather, where are you going? Time for me to get to Diane. All right, just don't be mad, okay, please? I'm not, Jeff, I'm late already. Okay, before you leave, though, I, I wanted to ask you something. What? Well, Jameson said I that you I don't want to hear his name again, ever. Now, wait a minute, Heather. Look, Jameson said he called me from Buffalo before he came down here last time. He wanted to give me a little time to get the money together. So, why are you telling me this now? Because I never even heard about the call. Bobby Spencer said she got it and gave you the message. Now, I want to know why you didn't give it to me. I never even saw a message like that. Are you sure? I'm positive. I don't know where Bobby got the idea she gave it to me. Well, she seemed pretty certain about it. She said she remembered you were talking to your mother when the call came in from Buffalo from some operator. Well, I'm sorry, Jeff. I never got that message. Well, if I had, do you think I would have forgotten to give it to you? Heather, I'm not accusing you of anything. I just want to find out what happened. All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll check with Bobby again. Maybe she did get mixed up. She has been a little preoccupied lately. Yes, I've noticed that myself. In fact, that's probably what happened. She misplaced it or something. 
Well, I sure wish I had gotten the message, though. Jack, if you're going to start in on that honey, again, honey, please. I... Look, I, I'm really wiped out. I, I'm going to take a cold shower and try and wake up. I'll be gone by the time you get out. Okay, I'll give you a call at Diana's from the hospital later. Fine. <laughs> 